Coach Ford here uh, with another episode of Ask Coach Ford. And and go ahead, reintroduce yourself to Rogue because they're not they don't know us yet. So introduce right. yourself. What's up, guys? It's Paige. I'm back again to see if I can stump Coach Ford with my questions this time, and I'm excited to be back. So Paige, she says she says it like she's not coming back. So Paige is the host for Ask Coach Ford because it doesn't make sense for me to do. And ask Coach Ford and ask myself questions. I can do that all the time. Look at my board. I ask myself questions all the time, right? Uh, so Paige has got tons of questions. Let's see if she can stop me this week. I don't know what the questions are. I'm letting everybody know now. This is all freestyle. This is free. I don't know. She says she's got four pages of notes. Show the world your pages of notes. Show them your, your questions. Four pages of questions. I don't know if we're going to get through all these questions. So we're going to have to break it down into segments. Uh, space it out. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited about this. So to kind of go into uh, in depth on what we're doing here, uh, as we've had tons of conversations over the last couple of weeks, um, helping 20 something year olds, asking them life questions, right? So I'm dubbed Paige the voice. I'm the mentor. She, she's the voice. You guys ask her questions and she will bring the questions onto the show. Obviously they got to be family friendly G rated questions, right? So I'm not asking any questions. I don't care about your relationships. I don't care about you. <laughs> what I care about is you doing your job. That's the only thing I care about. And what is your job to become the best person you can be. And that's what I'm here to coach you on. You can let somebody else do the relationship advice stuff and, and whatnot, but all right. So this is episode two. The, the first episode went over well. Um, I, I think as more 20 year olds get an idea of what we're doing here, I think they'll get on. And, and I, I think it's cool. And I think a lot of questions are, what the heck are these guys even doing? Um, and so just stick with us. It, it's work and development. But what Paige has basically done is forced my hand to produce resources for 20-something-year-olds. And guess what? We're giving away for free. And uh, if you want to check out the movie, go on CoachFordX.com, and, and we're going to be getting some cool gear up on our as we figure this out. So uh, without further ado, it is Paige's time now. Now Paige gets to take out her show now that all the introductions are done. Go ahead, Paige. Oh, yeah. Okay, so for this week's topic, I came up with some call, what I like to call 20 over 20. So 20, not necessarily topics, questions, maybe life advice, tips, information for anybody over 20 years old. So we got a whole list of things, four pages long. And yeah, so... This is going to be more driven towards people who, you know, want to start their own businesses or maybe be their own boss or stand alone. And this is going to give you all the info, well, not all, but a lot of information, how to start that up, give you some tips and tricks, maybe. So first step on our list today is understanding your goals. Coach Ford tells me all the time that we need to make a clear plan. You need to know your why before you do anything else. And he's really good at explaining all that. So I want to let him kind of explain what knowing your why is and why it's beneficial to know that before anything else. <laughs> uh, so first of all, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I got a new setup. The AirPods made me mad. So uh, I didn't like that. It, it, it cut, uh, cut out my audio last time. So I wasn't happy. So I, I'm troubleshooting for everybody to understand your why. And, and the reason why I segued into that is to help everybody understand the why component. Why does my audio sound important? <laughs> why is the internet connection important? Why is that all important? Why? Because I want to provide you great content. I, I went back and I watched episode one and there was a lot of great content. Thankfully, the uh, Riverside app that we use and you can hit the affiliate link, um, you know, caught the words in action. So it was able to take the words and get it on the screen for you guys when the audio cut out. Um, so the why. So why do you start with why? Understanding what drives you is what's going to carry you on the tough days. So my why, and it, it's one, I have family, right? So I, I have no choice but to succeed because I have a family. Two, my second why is we're called to serve other people. And whenever you're called to serve other people, it makes it easier to say, okay, 20 some year olds need advice that I can give to them, I can provide for them. Do I have it all figured out? Absolutely not. I'm not a person to sit up and say, I got to figure it out. Paige has been calling me out for the last, how many years that I've known her, Six right? Years. So I, I will tell you, I don't have everything figured out, but why is that important that I can have a conversation with somebody and not get offended 
right? And be like, okay, that's cool. Let's have a conversation because if I'm going based off what's going to make your life better, you're going to go through a brick wall for me, right? And and if you don't know that I care for you and if you don't know my why, then you'd be like, this guy's just a jerk. And that was what she thought when she first met me, right? And, and we'll be honest. She thought I was a complete jerk. <laughs> Right. But here we are six years later. um, She's helping 20 something year olds. Right. And here's the why I'm doing this, because there's a group of people that want to be successful in life and they don't know where to start. And I remember being that 20 something year old saying, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to figure it out by the seat of my pants and I hope it all works out. Right. And fortunate enough, it worked out for me. Um, And so start with why Uh, the biggest thing that I could tell you is what is your purpose? And when you understand your purpose, the why becomes real easy. My purpose is to serve others. So my why is real easy. It's easy to get on the internet and give free advice. It's easy to turn a camera on and talk to other people because there's a group of people that need this information. And whenever I serve others, it's not about me. It's about you and the individuals and the viewers at home to bring them the best information possible. And so my why is for others. My why is to serve other people. And some say, Well, that's not the profound why. It's really profound. Did I make your life better today? Is your life better from this information? Then I did my job. I can go to sleep easy at night saying, I helped somebody else today. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. It's real simple. Did you make somebody else's life better? Or did you make it worse by being a jerk? And so those are serious questions. And I've been jerks plenty of times. I'm sitting up here acting like I've been a jerk. Number one jerk in the world. But I think you have to be able to be the number one jerk in the world to set boundaries and guidelines for people to say, you're not doing that, right? And if you're not overly on that thing, people will run over you. But anyways, that's my why. Next question. All right, number I'll try two. not answering all your questions in one I take. No, I came prepared this time. Never. That's good. <laughs> that's good. You're tying right into that after you know your why, then you got to understand your vision, right? So now that we know our goals and what we want to do, What kind of message do we want to relate to others? How do we want them to perceive us and our business? And what is the importance of making sure people, making sure they know what they're getting? So let's, so that's a four part question. uh, And I'm going to break it down. First, I don't set goals anymore. I only have objectives. And, And my objective is to get up and serve the world to the highest extent possible. And if I serve the world to the highest extent possible, then God's going to take care of the rest. And that's the most first part of that question. The vision, my vision, depending on the, the environment, right? My, my vision is to serve people to the highest extent possible. Okay. Now let's break this down into basketball from a, from a coaching sports perspective. Uh, it is to empower the youth through the power, so to empower the youth through the power of mentorship and push their excellence on off the court. That's my vision there. My vision for, and I wrote this and I sent it to you, so I'm going to pull it up so people don't think this is fake and phony because she's asking me this question. I was not prepared because I, I want it to be um, authentic for you people so it's not scripted, right? Because I think in today's world, everything is, it's not that things are fine, it's fine scripted. But for me and I think for Paige, and we've had a lot of conversations, people are starving for real. People are starving for authentic. People are starving for genuine. And so you're going back to the why. I don't want to listen to a scripted fake podcast. Like I want real see that. I want to be like, oh, okay, these people are legit. These people are real. And and I don't want it to be so such a facade that people are like, oh my gosh, they script their entire show, which is good. And I think it's good. I'm glad you brought a script. So you will give the content and I will give the context. Right. And so that's what to make this important. And so I sent this to her on Friday. 2.06 p.m. So you guys know that this is legit and we can screenshot and put it on socials if it makes your life better. Our vision is to become the leading resource and community for young adults worldwide recognized for the impactful mentorship, authentic engagement, and transformable to advice. And so when, when you look at that and when you look at what we're doing from the Ford X media perspective, when you look at it from Ford X, and, and I tell you this all the time, it's not about me, right? When you're like, well, we're going to make you this. I'm like, I don't care about that. Um, let's make you the number one podcast host in the world. And, and that's what I care about. I only care about other people. And if I care about enough people, then everything else would take care of itself. Um, if I selfishly got up every single day and, and I didn't care about my family needs, they wouldn't support me the way that they do. 
Um, and you wouldn't support me the way that they do. And so when you're running your business, understand that it's about the people first. Um, and I don't like the term boss. I hate the term boss. I despise that term. I think it's a nasty word. I hate it. And, and it should be burned with the rest of the dirt. Um, that's no good. But anyways, but because we have those terms, that's the life we live in. And, and when people say you're the boss, I'm not. I, we're working in this together. Now, somebody has to be the team captain. If you want to call me team captain, fine. I will take the title as team captain and I will own that and I will love it. And I will gladly be captain. Uh, to be a leader, I don't want to lead anybody. I want to follow enough people and help support them. And by following enough people and supporting them, I become a leader. Not because I'm intentionally wanting to do that. It's just what life requires of me. Um, and, and when you uplift and support people, kind of like this show and podcast, when tons of people are going to ask, well, why her? Well, why not? Right? And so when you give people, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to your boy, LeBron James and D-Lo. There's a clip. I think I shared this with you last week or somebody. Yeah. D-Lo kicks it to LeBron and LeBron looks at him like, and if you don't cook that dude and he tossed it right back to him and D-Lo cooked that guy. Right. And so mm -hmm. when, whenever I go, I'm the lead creator of Ford X media, right? Yes. Am I the owner? Yes. Does all of the risk come back to me? Yes. I understand. And, and if you're going to run a business, if you're going to run a business, wow, there was my country twang St. Louis country grammar coming out there. If you're going to run a business, you, there's got to be risk. And if you're not willing to risk, most people are not willing to risk anything, right? So uh, I, I'm I'm making risky moves every single day, right? Um, but anyway, so if you're going to run a business, it's about your people first. Take care of the people that are going to take care of your people, right? And so, uh, yeah, it's about being a lead creator. I'm just the lead creator right now in, in a company that's being built, and, and that's the bigger vision. And so I'm going to read the vision again. It, it's to become a leading resource, which is what we're becoming, and community, and we're going to build that. It's finding out where all this 20 something year olds are all at Starbucks and where they're not working. So we're going to have to do a Starbucks meetup for all these people, right? Um, community for young adults worldwide recognized for the impactful mentorship, authentic engagement, and transformative advice. And so, what's big about that? We're, we're not thinking small time. And I think for a lot of 20 something year olds, if you're at home, uh, you get stuck, right? Well, my mom and dad said this. And I'm like, okay, well, Okay, I'm not here to disrespect your parents. I believe you should honor your parents. Uh, like I said in the first episode, my parents died when I was, my father died when I was one, my mother died when I was three. I honored them today by being who I am, right? You know, I could be um, messed up, right? But I'm not, I'm here. I'm taking, I'm putting their name in honor because my name is Justin Dewan. And you combine those two names, it's Dewan. My mom's name is Don, my da dad's name is John. So it's Dewan. Um, and so respect your parents. This is not what I'm telling you. But if your parents never attained or went for something of which I'm, I'm showing the world they can do, then it's real hard for them to comprehend this. And this is no disrespect to them um, because they lived the life they wanted to live in the era that their life is here. We are living in a completely different era that your parents grew up in, that your grandparents grew up in. Your parents grew up in a different era than your grandparents. And your grandparents grew up in a different era than your grandparents. And your grandparents grew up in a different era than your ancestors. So I want everybody to understand that. What era are we living in? We're living in an age of service-based businesses and content creation. And if you're not getting involved in the content creation and the services and caring about other people, especially in a world that's trying to go to AI, you're going to get left. So I'm ahead of the curve here. Uh, what's the curve? I'm going to build a company with a bunch of 20 year olds that nobody wants to listen to. And I'm going to say, well, I'll listen to you. I'm not too proud. I'll listen to a bunch of 16. I've been doing that for years. She's been telling me what to do for six years. What's new here. Right? So I get told what to do by my 11 year old. She's going to be 12. I get told what to do by my six year old. Okay. I get told about what to do by a lot of people. And so, and it's not because um, they're telling me what to do is because if they straight, they going to make sure I'm straight. And I think if we if we operate our businesses with a sense of gratitude and gratefulness, then life can be a lot better. But yeah, um, don't let me hold you up on the next question. But I, I think I answered all parts of that question. Oh, yeah. OK, so now we got our why, you know, the vision. Yeah. Gosh, people are blowing up my phone right now. It's throwing me off. So now we're going yeah. to a few mental tools we might need. Yeah. Tie it right back into what you were just talking about, decision making. Sometimes you got to make decisions you don't, or that can seem risky. Push it off till the time is, or whatever. So, let's see. 
how much do you think gut and logic go together? Is one more important than the other? And then what do you do? You use more of your gut when you make these decisions and you go for these new things, or do you use your logic or both or neither? What do you got for me there? Um, you know, it, it's situational based. Uh, so every person is different. It, it depends on how you sleep at night. If you're a person that can fly off the seat of your pants, then you don't sleep that way. If you're a person that you need all the details, then that's what you need. I'm a driver. My personality assessment says I'm a driver. So that means I'm not about to do this, this back and forth. Like, no, let's just, let's hit the play. Let's do the show. Let's do it. Uh, I think you need both. I think in the world, that's what makes the world beautiful. That's what makes the world go what it is, is whenever you can have the person that goes off their intuition, then you got the person that says, hey, homie, I know you want to go off your gut, but here's what the data says. And sometimes when you look at that data, you got to say, no, nah, that data ain't right. Um, this is what I'm telling you. This is what the people says. So here, here's an example of gut versus logic, right? So the logical adult says, why are you getting on YouTube giving free advice to 20-something-year-olds? That worry about your job. Go, go get your paycheck. Do this. And I'm like, no, nah, man, they paying people twenty, thirty thousand dollars for this type of stuff. They paying Mr. Beast a million dollars a month. Yeah, what I want to listen to you for? You you gave up your dreams. Why would I want to listen to somebody that gave up their dreams? Now, logic says, hey, hey, uh, let me text all these 20 year olds in my phone and ask them where y'all be getting y'all coffee from. That's logic. My gut said. Go talk to the 20 year olds and see what they need and serve them. Cause you know, those are your contemporaries. And then I say, all right, let's say I'm serving 20 year olds that drink coffee. That's the logic. And then you say, I drink at Starbucks. Bad. Let me go text this other 20 year old. Guess what she says? I love Starbucks. Okay, bad. So I go ask another 20 year old, where you drink your coffee from? I brew it at home. Why? Now we're getting to logic. Well, because it saves me $4. I said, so. You're, you're worried about $4, 20 euros, right? Most people think like this. And so um, because most people think like this, they give up on their dreams early because they're like, man, I can't even afford $4 worth of coffee. You want me to go pursue a business? Wow, that's a sad life to live. And uh, so I ain't going to live that life. My family won't live that life. My kids won't live that life. And so um, when you talk about logic, logic will hinder you from your blessings because logic will says, why would you quit your job? And I'm not quitting nothing, but I'm saying most people will say, why would you get on YouTube and start speaking? But they'll talk about the person in the game. I'm in the game right now. You're in the game right now. I'll just do you an alley you. Uh, but they'll be like, oh my gosh, look at his Instagram. Look at her Instagram. Look at, ooh. so they'll do all that while you're in the game, right? And I, and, and I love it because it, it mirrors sports because they'll talk about LeBron while LeBron scored 40,000 points in the leading the league in the NBA history for points. They only talk about the people that's in the game. They never talk about uh, the guy that that never finished. I'm going I'm to name a person and shout out to him because he made it to the league, Josh Childress. And the only real hoopers know who Josh Childress was, and he was a walking bucket. Hmm. Right? But you know who LeBron James is. You know Stephen Curry. Um, but you're not talking about the guys that are at 15th man on the roster that you never see in the game. And so, but we in the game now. And so the, the logic that most adults deal with and most 20-year-olds, this is what they're going to run into. They just settle. Uh, logic tells you to settle because your intuition hasn't developed yet. And until you get to 25, 26, uh, that intuition hasn't developed because you haven't had enough scenarios to understand. So for these 20 year olds, when they listen to this, this is really high level and they ain't going to be able to comprehend it yet. Uh, so it's real simple. Do you go to chicken or the steak? That's a serious question. Yeah. Chicken. Do you go to chicken or the steak? Like steak, so me chicken. Exactly. So, but their, their logic told you, I don't like steak. So I'm going chicken. Right. That's what, you know, now I'm going to say, Hey, you want to pursue a million dollar opportunity. There's a lot of risk. I don't know what the end of the journey looks like, or do you want that 30, 40, $50,000 job with security? Logic tells you I'm going to go get the security because that's what my parents told me. That's the only thing I know. And I got these bills due and I got these bills and my belly hungry and all I can feel is my ribs touching. And, and I, and I can't go to, I can't pursue a million dollar job because I don't know if it's going to fan out, but then you look down the road and the dude that stuck with it is reaching a million dollar deal. And then you'd be like, dang, man, how you do that? You remember when I called you? Yeah. Well, remember that I told you what I was doing. And so um, sometimes your logic fools you and, and you got to go with your gut. Because your logic will be developed off your gut instinct, right? Your gut 
and logic are together, but uh, you got to do one or the other. But most time, your logic will fool you because you ignored your gut too many times or your intuition. Yeah. That was a good question. If I need to expand on it for the people at home, let me know. You say that like you didn't expect me to have good questions. No, no, I was saying like it's it's for the show. It's for the showism. It's it's mm-hmm. so because if they don't know it's a good question, how would they know to ask good questions? So we're teaching the young people. Point. We're teaching you. See, this how I mean this is how now you're getting to the real <laughs> ask coach for it. Whenever we're off camera, so you guys get to see her. Uh, you can die look that she hasn't. She's almost one to give me there, but we're on camera. So, but it was a good question. No, so because let me expand on that. For the people at home, the 20 some year olds that don't know how to ask questions on their job, how are they supposed to grow? So, when you're teaching them how to ask good questions and they get around people of high level, then they know how to present themselves. Then, they, then they'll feel comfortable walking in that room. Then they'll feel more confident. Then when they go and they talk to that person or that boss or that job, they're going to go in there with some confidence opposed to saying, well, I don't know if I can get this or ooh, and then go into your mental skills. So you was talking about mental skills. So we're getting ready to go into your next topic. So I won't touch on that because I know that's what's coming next, but I'll be quiet. I just want to say that we are probably the perfect example of logic and gut. You're all gut and I'm all logic and together it just works. Yeah, it's not that I don't use logic. It's just that logic has fooled me too many times, right? So, so for example, um, I could have been doing this, uh, but logic in the world will tell you, you got family, you shouldn't be on no YouTube. YouTube is for kids, but YouTube is paying people out thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars. And so, um, yeah, the gut would tell you, don't listen to these people because the era they was making money in is gone. The era that your parents made money in is gone. Where you can get a forty, fifty thousand dollar jobs in Farmington and survive, you can't get no forty, fifty thousand dollar job like that and survive no more. You got to have some wealth, and you got to have some abundance, and you got to have some assets. And so, if you ain't got that, then you're in trouble. And so, I'm pursuing assets. I'm not pursuing security. I'm pursuing abundance and wealth. But, anyways, yeah. Next question. Uh, that actually gives me a perfect segue to hit trial and error. So, if something fails or doesn't turn out like you hope it does. Who cares? Keep grinding. Move on to the next. Something's got to stick. And then I feel like it's important to be comfortable with failure because it's not going to happen overnight. You're going to you're not going to hit it right off the gate most nine times out of ten. And then I feel like with these tools, I don't know, our past experiences together can make for some really good. I don't know. Trial and error. Just talk about trial and error. Yeah. No, I know. I know where you're going with that. Um... So that ties right into your last question, um, mm-hmm. but, but trial and error, uh, most people are always expecting a negative outcome. So i tell you this, most people have practiced bad outcomes their entire life. That's why they never pursue their dreams. And so they never thought what would happen if this actually pursued this thing I pursued actually happened. But because they hit the rock so many times, there's a, there's a picture I'm going to put up on, on Instagram, I'm going to tag you in. And the dude was going for gold and the dude, the dude quit before he struck gold and, and uh, it was either gold or oil. And so I'm going to share that with you. And because he missed out, he went and sold his parts, but because he didn't know what he was doing, uh, the dude that knew what he's doing came through and struck gold and was like one of the wealthiest people in America. I have to go pull the story up. Um, but that dude learned a lesson from that uh, to, to not give up because he was three feet of oil, of an oil field of gold, one to two. And so think about that. Most people quit three feet before the finish line because it got hard. And think about this. Most people never start because they can't think past their first initial thoughts. They can't think past, oh, so-and-so going to laugh at me. Uh, my family going to disown me. Uh, my family thinks because I get on a podcast and I start speaking that I'm doing something wrong. But they don't realize that the world, that this is a billion-dollar industry and that, that it's not slowing down. Uh, technology just hit 25 years old this year. Uh, you got to think about it. it. Came out in 1999, right? So it's older than you, but it ain't that much older than you. It's only older than you by five years, and so put that in things. So we talking about 20 something year olds. We talk to the technology. We talking the internet. It's not even in its 30s yet. I'm older than the internet, right? And so I'm older than this computer right here. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it, it's different. But people, but people are so sick and twisted with, with the life they was told. Um, yeah, I got a college degree, but I don't like corporate America. I don't like working jobs where people call themselves lording over me or being a boss. 
I give you a check and I'm your boss. Well, I got a problem with that. And so uh, trial and error tells me I don't like no bosses. So I'm just going to be real with it. Um, trial and error tells me I don't like corporate America. I don't like the way they operate and treat people because they make people feel like modern day slaves instead of actually treating people right. Um, and so uh, whenever they, whenever you, you hear somebody speak this way, because I lived it. And, and so I'd prefer to build my own company, no matter how hard it is in order to treat people right. And tell, Hey, going back to the why and the vision, when you know your why and vision trial and error is, is part of the process. Uh, uh, Thomas Edison had how many adventures before he finally figured it out. Uh, and, and so th there's tons of guys like that. There's tons of people in history books and, and that actually, a book. Here's actually a really good book to read. You know, I got my books. I always got a book for y'all. 10 X is easier than a two X. Um, when they was talking about Michelangelo and they was talking about that during the Renaissance time, all those, those great painters and crafters. And there was a family behind that, that was pulling the strings because they loved the arts and stuff like that. So, but don't quote me on that. I have to, I read so many books. Um, I, I think the book it's in the book, uh, innovation secrets of Steve jobs. I got it somewhere here. Yeah. Um, no, it's in the back of my car. I just remembered that because I was going to pull it out and read it before I got on the show. But anyways, I read books, Think and Grow Rich. So uh, trial and error is nothing if you equip your brain and understand that every person of success had to go through trial and error. Uh, any person that's afraid of trial and error, that's why they never succeed at a high level because they can't stomach their, their risk. Uh, I want to make uh, $100 million. I got to be afraid. I got to be ready to accept the fact that I'm going to have to invest and lose a million dollars in this lifetime. But guess what? I'm going to lose a million dollars working for somebody else for 60 years anyway. So why not go and pursue my own goals and dreams and get my own million dollars? So yeah, child and error is necessary. Excuse me. Yeah. Next question. Well, we basically just worked right into mentality and mental toughness. <laughs> and I know we touched on this uh, quite a bit last time, so I won't have you go too deep into this one. But again, mental toughness, how does that go into a business? And how do you build your mental toughness to be able to, you know, be your own, not boss, because you didn't like that word, but get where you want to be, per se. How does mental toughness play into all of this? Yeah, I don't even call myself a boss. Um, you got to be able to lead yourself first before you can lead anybody else. And you got to be able to follow other people. And you got to be humble enough to want to follow behind somebody. Um, I'm humble enough to say, hey, let's make you the host of this show. Let's make you the star of this show. I'm just the voice. I'm just a mentor. You, you the voice of the 20 some year olds because they got questions they want to know and, and you ain't afraid to knock down that door. And so, uh, when, and, and I don't like the term mental toughness either. So I'm going to help y'all out at home, but here's why. But when, but when you, but this is good lesson. You asking good questions because y'all need to know this stuff. Um, because they're seeing the, the development of a future a multimillionaire. They're seeing the development of a superstar and, and process. And so when you listen to all the greats, they think the same way. Right. There's no such thing as mental toughness. It's how you see yourself. So when I wake up in the morning, I tell myself, if I, I show you on my board, look behind me, I got all these sticky notes and everywhere in my, my office down here, I'm writing notes to myself and the notes tell me I am. I am the next Steve Jobs. I am a multimillionaire. I'm a multimillionaire turned to a billionaire. God is the sovereign ruler of my life. He gives me charge of my assignment and therefore I'm in charge of my assignment to be great. Most people don't talk to themselves like that. Most people start a project of this nature and say, it's too hard. I put, I turned on the camera. Oh my gosh. Right. So we had some troubleshooting, full disclosure. We had some troubleshooting error. Uh, we could have been like most people say, oh, we can't shoot today. I said, no, uh, close out the app. Just close out the app. Most people don't close out the app and patient enough to do a process. And so uh, I've been recording content three weeks before I actually jump on this show. And the only reason why I thought of it is because you spoke up about it. And so, uh, yeah, mental toughness. So here's how you do it. You got to practice telling yourself internally that I'm capable of doing these things. Most people don't wake up every day and tell themselves they're capable of doing nothing. That's why when they in their 20s, they struggle because their family is telling them that they should be doing this and society is telling them they should be doing this. And they ain't got no mentor to listen to. And then they get a mentor like me that says, man, don't listen to them fools. I ain't man, no disrespect. And I ain't calling them fools like that. I'm just saying, like, uh, I'm just talking from culture, right? So, like, people who who speaking from a place they ain't never been in. So, people trying to tell me how to run a podcast. 
bro, you're not even running a podcast. You're not even on a YouTube channel trying to tell me how to record videos, trying to tell me how to run a business. And so uh, mentally, we personally will let that person deter him from the dream. And so who's in your circle of influence? I got multimillionaires in my circle, right? So why would I listen to a person that never touched a million dollars trying to tell me how to touch a million dollars? That don't make no sense. Why would I talk to a, 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 a fan in the stands that never shot a jump shot trying to tell me how to shoot a jump shot? That's like LeBron asking anybody but Michael Jordan how to be the GOAT. Like Kobe didn't consult with people. Kobe consulted with Michael Jordan and said, how I do this? How I become you? And, and that's the difference, right? And so your mentality, when we talk about mental toughness, is how much practice you really get up saying, telling people, no, this is what I'm doing. Uh, I don't care what it's going to take. Uh, and that's the position I'm in right now. Come hella high water, this is what I got to do. But you got to build your mental muscles up to this. You got to build your mental fortitude. I write it on my jugs all the time. The same thing that's written on my jugs is written on my wall back here. Same thing that's written on my wall is written on this wall, is written on this wall. I talk to myself every day about how great I am. And if you listen to the greatest, they always tell you they're great. They never, they never be loaded themselves to make other people feel good about themselves. I'm sorry you feel inferior when I'm around. Um, and I'm not trying to make you feel no type of way, but I can't diminish my light to make your light better. And so uh, if you would accept my light, lighting your candle, we both got a light. But why would I extinguish my light? And then you ain't got no place to see and I ain't got no place to see. And so, yeah, um, but it starts with internal communication and then imagery and visualizing. But it's important that you got a vision and a why to help you craft that. And if you ain't got a vision and a why, it's hard to develop mental toughness. It's hard to develop imagery. It's hard to develop mental skills because you don't have a North Star. You don't have a compass. Most people don't have a compass. I have a compass. That's why I can get on here and speak with as much boldness as I do because I dare somebody to tell me that I'm wrong. I wrote a book. Most people are scared to write five sentences and post it on Facebook. Most people are scared to do a, a two-minute podcast. Most people get stage fright. I have no stage fright. I have no fear. I'm putting my thoughts out to the world, and I wish somebody would say something about it. And I'll say, okay, cool. Jump on the podcast. Let's talk about it. Because I have no fear. Look, I wrote my own book, right? And, and I'm, I can write a book. Why? Because I'm reading other people's books because I'm learning from it. Just do your job. And here's the thing. I would be amiss if I told you that uh, I wrote a book called Just Do Your Job to Become the Best Person in the World, and you're not, the, and I'm not living that myself. That's the greatest contradicting. You wouldn't follow nobody like that. You would call me a liar. You'd be off the call right now. You wouldn't respect that. Nobody would respect that. Um, and so mental toughness is saying, man, I'm going to be a man of my word, and, and uh, you ain't always going to be right, and I ain't always right. But being right enough that it, 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 it be consistent, you know what I mean? So yeah, not everybody a hundred percent, but yeah, mental toughness is a uh, what you practice and what you tell yourself. So yeah, good question. Good questions. <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me. I had communication skills on here. I had inner circle on here. Ask it, ask it anyway. Ask it anyway, so I can expand on some. Because you, you you asked about the communication. Yeah. Ask the communication question anyway. I was just going to talk about how important it is to have communication skills and how it looks like to build those skills. How do you build those skills? Those are good questions. Ask. Where do you learn to communicate? How did you learn? How do That's I a good learn? question. Those are great questions. I hope everybody at home is taking notes um, because when I tell you this is going to be one of the greatest podcasts, and here's why it's one of the greatest podcasts, because you're about to see a multi-million dollar company being born out of this. Um, because of who, who my people is, and it's talking about your, your communication. And you're just talking about your vision. And so I'm about to bring it full circle. So I'm finna kill all her questions in this one answer. Uh, when you have a vision so big, uh, the world cannot process or comprehend. They can't comprehend somebody of me that, that thinks like I'm Motown. Your video working? Your sound still there? <laughs> so we having technical difficulties. So... Uh, to answer the question about communication, uh, the biggest thing in, in the world of communication is uh, when you got a vision and you got a why, uh, you, you're able to articulate your points. And, and the more you practice it, in order to really practice it, you got to read, you got to write, you got to record. And so you, you got to make a commitment to doing these things. And so uh, y'all can see, even with the technical difficulties, I'm still able to move the show along, right? Because uh, there's a level of focus that you have when you do the practice, when you do the work. And so I read, I write, I record every single day. Uh, I even waited to to not do a, a earlier show 
so I could be in position to do this conversation. And so uh, you got to practice. Uh, I write, I read every day. I write, I read every day. And I, and I can't, I can't say no more for y'all more plainly than that. Write, read every day, read good authors, listen to good people, listen to good people who communicate, uh, who's in your circle of influence makes a big difference. Uh, because if you cannot, uh, get around people who are going to push you to the next level, then it's almost mathematically impossible to pursue these dreams because nobody can do it by themselves. Everybody's got to do it uh, as a team. And so you got to have a team. You, you got to be a part of uh, a, a people in your circle of influence that's going to uh, make you want to be better and make you want to be great. And so for me, like I was saying, uh, Barry Gordon, or let me look up the name. I said this with my homeboy, my big brother, Lenny. I was talking to him the other day. Uh, let me see what the name of him is. Uh, pardon me. Uh, Barry Gordy. So Barry Gordy, y'all need to look him up. Uh, he was the uh, owner of Motown. He started Motown, and he was the one that got all the talent and attraction. So I'm becoming the modern day. I'm becoming the modern day Barry Gordy. And so uh, it's just part of the process. And so uh, when you understand your why, the show must go on, even with technical difficulties. I love it. Um, and so, yeah, it was a good question. You're going to have to re-ask the question for the people at home. Because uh, <laughs> what happened to your other phone? What happened? My cousin's in Mexico right now. She was calling me. <laughs> yeah, turn your angle. Turn your camera angle. This way? Yeah. What can you see? Half your face. This All right, then turn it, turn it back. I see this way. Let's see. Can you see my face? I can see your face, but it's like this. Yeah, it's turn fine. It. Need to see turn, it. turn it back. There you go. Yeah, leave it there. Okay. Yeah, your cousin. Tell your cousin next time. Put your phone in do not disturb mode. Tell your cousin she disturbed me recording. I lit it. She called me like five times. I was trying to text her didn't work yeah hey react your question for the people at home oh god what were we on communication yeah oh i said what's the important of communication skills when running a business what else did i say i said how would you how would i learn that how would how did you learn that how do we get knowledge in that area because that seems to be one of our most difficult situations we don't know how to talk to people we don't know the right questions to ask and we especially don't know who to ask so uh so i i answered a lot of that in during the technical difficulty times but i'm gonna I'm re-expand on it uh you gotta practice you gotta read you gotta write you gotta record your speech um and then you gotta get around other high performance and high level people Pe excuse me people who are gonna push you to be better uh, people who are going to challenge you and, and, and support you. Uh, not those snarky, so I call them soft trolls, where they on your thing like, oh, you know, they always got some snarky stuff to say. Uh, but you got to practice. You got to communicate. Uh, I, I do a podcast show every day. I, I get on TV, not on TV. I get on this YouTube and I talk I talk in front of the camera because I got to improve. Uh, when I'm at team practice, I'm communicating. I'm, I'm talking all the time and, and working on my speech. And it wasn't something that I was good at practicing. And so you, you get better by practicing, you get better by being intentional and setting your mind on the things that you're trying to improve at. And, and the world will tell you, uh, communicators make movements and, and to become a great orator. So it comes back to your why and becomes back to your vision. If your visions, if you can't communicate your vision, nobody's going to open up their pocketbooks to you. And so, uh, yeah, that's a good question. How do you do it? Read, write, record every single day, read, write, record every single day rewrite record every single day and if you ain't willing to do that then you don't want to be better at it you don't want to improve because you have to write it down and you have to read and listen to other great thinkers you have to be around other people what you feel your mind with what you feel your body with is drastically important and most people aren't willing to feel their minds with the right stuff and so that's why they never attain no level of success because they can't discipline themselves and i was there and i ain't trying to act like i got it all figured out like i wasn't there so uh i just had enough of life just kind of kicking my butt and so I was like, you know what? God was like, hey, man, uh, you're not doing the thing I called you here to do, and, and you're capable of doing more. And so I had to answer that call. And so uh, when I came to this great awakening, uh, God God makes room for us, and everybody's got gifts and talents. And so how do you improve these things? How do you ask the right questions? Practice. It's like working on your jump shot. 
If your jump shot broke, don't expect to make shots in the game. Come on, man. Get in the gym and work on it. You, you turn the ball over because you don't work on your ball handling. You don't work on your defense. You don't get in the gym working on your moves. You don't get in the gym doing nothing, and you expect to be good. That's crazy to me. That's like the greatest form of insanity, something that never changes. You never practice. So, yeah, short short answer, practice. Practice the thing you want to get better at. Right. I got a blog. I write on my blog. Uh, I write in my notes. I'm always taking notes. I'm always thinking. I'm always talking and communicating, and I don't waste my time. And if a, a person going to waste my time, I ain't going to waste my speech with them. Yeah, gonna make me look stupid. Good question. What's the next one? Well, we've talked about a hundred different things that you do on a daily basis. So I'm gonna tie that straight into work ethic because it takes a special kind of work ethic to do what you do every day. So let's talk about your schedule, what your daily schedule looks like, how you figured out that that's what works for you, and how you know people my age to figure out what works for them. Uh, so that comes back to you enough compass. Uh, so, and we talk about this episode one and, and it's important. You talk about it all the time until they get it. What is your purpose? What is your North star? What is the thing that's going to get you up every single day? And so I get up at 5.00 AM because that's the easiest time for me to work on me. Um, you know, after, after my kids are up, after it's time to go to work, after it's time to go to basketball practice, there is no time for me to, uh, really be focused in. And, and so, uh, 5 a.m. is the time I get up, I pray, I talk to God, I ask him for guidance on his life, and then uh, I work on my body, I read, I write, I record, um, I do all the things I'm telling you. And I wasn't always doing this, I'm telling you right now, uh, this, is a, this is a transformation, this is a development of a person who could have been this a long time ago, but I wasn't ready from a mental perspective. And so I ain't trying to act like I got it all figured out. I just came into this epiphany of who I am. Uh, thankfully, God woke me up to who I am. And, uh, you know, he's telling me, go be great. And so that, that's what, that's, what's driving me and motivating me. And I want to help the 20 something year olds figure it out earlier rather than later, because if there's some people my age that, ain't, that didn't know what they was doing at 20, they still ain't got it figured out at 30. And we've been ready to push 30 something. They ain't going to have it figured out at 40 and they may never figure it out. And so, uh, some people figure it out later in life. Some don't, that's just the way the numbers go. Um, but when it comes down to work ethic, I was working hard on all the right things and, and I taught, but I wasn't working smart on the things that was going to make me a multimillionaire. And so I'm working on the things that's going to make me a multimillionaire now. Uh, it's, it teaches you the value of hard work, teaches you the importance of working smart. Um, and so my routine is five to six fifteen, And then from six fifteen, uh, it's the, the day's, the day is gone, right? I got to get ready for school. My kids got to get ready for school. I got to go to work. And then we practice, and I practice for four hours. And then uh, I got to schedule time to do these, these podcasts. And then, you know, I spend family time for the hour. And then from 10 to 4, 10 to 4.45, I'm asleep. I'm slump. I'm snoring. I'm snoring loud, too. For all your people that are special, I snore. So I ain't no special person like that. I snore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I snore. So, and I got to work on my snoring. So all uh, y'all special people at home that think they, they, they sleep like they Hollywood. I don't sleep like I'm Hollywood. I'll sleep like a normal individual. Then I get up and I grind. I do my push-ups. I do my sit-ups. I do my jump rope. Uh, I read my books. I pray to God. I, I do all that. So, yeah. But you just got to want it. Your mentality shifted. Like your mentality is going to shift as this becomes more and more real, as, as the vision becomes more clearer to you, then your, your schedule is going to change. The things you used to do two months ago, three months ago, when they're like, hey, let's go do this. You're like, ah, I need to go read. I need to go write. I need to go grow my brain because this next episode of the podcast, I got to come with more fire and blaze because if not, Justin's going to answer all the questions in the first five minutes. So oh. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, your routine is important. So develop a routine. But first, you got to have a North Star. And if you don't have a North Star, go serve people. Go to a dog shelter. Go to a homeless shelter. Uh, go go walk the streets, pick up trash, uh, go go clean somebody, go pick up an old lady's uh, garden, go do somebody's grass for free, go do something for free, go get on the internet and, and give somebody a shout out, say, hey, I appreciate you, go make somebody day smile, go give somebody some love and encouragement, go love on somebody, uh, if you ain't got no North Star, then, you'll, then your compass will start to guide you, because God put that in everybody that we're supposed to love people, we're supposed to serve somebody else, it's not about us, and so uh, the greatest among us came to serve, not to be served. And so, yeah, that's a bar. So y'all might need to go Google who that was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that leads us directly into 
hardships. So I'm assuming not that I'd know, but when you run a business, I'm assuming you face quite a bit of hardships, quite a bit of challenges. And I mean, this is like a battle to make your dreams reality, as you always say, some tangible, some mental. So how do you respond to the hardships? Like, do you have, what'd you say? Do you have to have what it takes to alter your path and walk around it? Or are you going to give up and get stuck behind? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, So when I was 22, uh, when I was 23, I'm trying to remember at what age I was, uh, maybe 23, 24, I started my first delivery business and uh, it was tough. I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't asking the right questions. Uh, And then I shut that down to get into coaching high school level and then uh two years later covid happened and i got a phone call they said hey you still got that delivery business i said no i shut that down a couple years ago they said you should have kept that going you'd have been a millionaire by now i said man i didn't know covid was gonna happen like this and so uh yeah covid happened and it 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 changed my outlook and so i just stuck with coaching basketball and building up the school and so uh and god you know like i said god was working on me and said hey uh you, you got some things I need you to do. And so uh, I started doing those things. And uh, you, you got to go to the end journey before you can go to the thing and then you reverse engineer. So I'm a multimillionaire. I'm going to be a billionaire. And so I tell myself every, this every single day. I write it down every day. I write it on my water jugs. It's because there was somebody that didn't experiment that when you write positive words on stuff, and then when you write negative words on stuff. And so when you write positive words on your heart, when you write positive words in your mind, when you write positive words in your existence, then you get positive outcomes. That's why a lot of young people are struggling because they don't know how to write positivity on their life. Because when they go to ask people they care about, they don't know how to write positivity on them because they've never done something they try to pursue. And so it's real hard for them. So when my kids say, dad, we get the t-shirt design done. Yeah, yeah, I got your t-shirt design. It's on the website. Good looking pops. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of you. And so they like, hey, did you get my fuzzy pants design yet? No, it's going to take a minute to get those fuzzy pants designed, but I'm going to get them done for you. Hey, I just made a, a cell phone case. You want to buy it? Yeah, I'll buy your cell phone case, even though it's made out of cardboard and you scribbled on it. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm not killing a dream. I'm not killing who they is as an individual. And so uh, most parents just don't know how to help their kid cultivate their creative side because their creative side was killed off a long time ago. And so I'm a creator at all times. And so my kids create, my kids to think about how they can make money. My kids think about how they can touch a dollar. My kids think about how they're going to be millionaires. And you don't think like that because now this makes your creative side, uh, it makes your creative side expand out. So now you're thinking, man, all right, so how am I going to really spice the show? So I'm going to do a 20 for 20, but then I come and kill the 20 questions in the first five minutes. And so, uh, but once you start operating on that higher frequency, that's when your life changes. And so, uh, yeah, it's just different. It's just different here. Uh, but but you got to go to the end result and then walk your way back. Everything I'm doing now is just the process to the end result, which is what I'm already in, which is a multimillionaire on a way to becoming a billionaire. Most people are like, you live in a delusional dream. If you go listen to every elite person, this is how they think. This is how they talk. Everything. Delusion only if I don't put action to my words. That's what delusion is. I put action to my words. That's the difference. Most people won't ever put action to their words. And so uh, I really do text the 20 year olds and ask them what, how to make their life better. I really did create resources for them. I really did write a book for them. I really do got all that for them. I really am doing all these things. And so uh, now I'm just waiting for time to catch up. I'm just waiting for the algorithm of life to say, hey, homie been doing his work. He ready for us to speed him up to that million dollar mark. And so, uh, yeah, but yeah, that, that's a good question. This next one. It's very simple, easy. <laughs> it's probably the hardest question of them all then. <laughs> well, we're tying into like the last three, I think. How do you respond to those who don't understand your vision? I don't worry about them. Simple. I knew that. I'm, I'm wasting no time. I'm wasting no time for you. God is the sovereign ruler of my life, and he left me in charge of my assignment. And he told me I was great. So the, the greatest among us came and served. So if, I, if I'm not meant to serve you, I'm not wasting my time for you. I told y'all who I serve. I serve the 20-something-year-olds and, and, and that, that drink coffee. Them are my, them my people. Them are my people I'm talking to. I got to go get her a Starbucks gift card because she's my people. 
I got to go get my other 20 some girls at Starbucks and I got to sit them down. I got to help them learn some stuff. Right? I don't want to talk to nobody that don't want no Starbucks and no coffee and they don't want to learn. What I want to talk to them for? That's a waste of my time. You're not going to buy my product anyway. You're not going to buy my book anyway. You're not going to buy my merch anyway. You just waste my time. You just want to feel good because you're talking to me and you want to give me your two cents when I don't really care. Unless you, some of these people in this book back here, this is one of the greatest books I've ever read. Every elite person I know and study has read this book. So if you want to be elite, you better get the book. It's called A Burning Desire. The thing is a burning desire. I got a burning desire to be a multimillionaire on my way to a billion. Yeah. So I don't waste my time. I ain't even going to entertain them. But they motivate me. Thank you for motivating. Because they always come on my post talking about some troll slick stuff. But I'm like, I'm in the game, though. I'm about to go win some championships. I already won the championships, but yeah, I ain't even gonna spend no more time on that. You're gonna get me fired up and get me out of get me out of character. Shoot. Sure. I just you know, I feel like a lot of us people my age spend too much time caring about what people think and use that as an excuse to be like, okay, I'm not going any further. I'm not pushing the boundaries. I'm gonna fall in line like everybody has done before me. So to see someone like you and use our resources like that kind of gives us the little nudge we need to you know this isn't what i want to do i want to i want to break the algorithm i want to do something different so that's what i hope our message can kind of relay to you guys and it he relays to me every day every day he'll text me and make me want to push a little harder drive a little more and do something different and make the life that i want to live so yeah and and it's good and it's good it's good that they hear from you because um you're the voice and i'm just a mentor and so okay. I get I get the context. So I'm gonna ask you, uh, and I, and we're gonna flip the we're gonna flip it around just to kind of break break the mold. How has this impacted your life and your future now? And, and what would your life be projecting if we never started this and we never have the conversations? Because it's important that they see it full circle. I mean, I'm gonna be real honest. I right before you had asked me to start this podcast, I was in this sort of mentality where it was like. I like my job. I don't love my job. And I'm doing the same thing every day. Yeah, I'm helping people. I work in the health or medical field. I'm helping people. I'm doing, you know, what I felt I was called to do. But I was in this rut and I was like, something's got to change. Something's got to be different. And I've never been a person, anybody would tell you this. I've never been the one to follow the way everybody else has done it before me. I've always been a little different. I've always been a little, you know, pushy, snarky, whatever you want to call it. I've never been a follower and Justin gives me that kind of push I need to really set in motion the plans that I have for myself. So when I got the text, it wasn't even really a question. He was like, you're going to do this. I want you to do this and this and this. And I know him well enough. I don't even have to question it. I was like, all right, I'm on board. Use me for this. Let's see what we can make. And I've never once questioned his judgment because I know the type of person he is. And I know he's never going to put me in a position where I fall. He's going to lift me up. And that gives me everything I need to be like, all right, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Going back to that, you know, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar $50,000 job. Do you want to do that? Or do you want to be a millionaire? He gives me the, what I need to be able to take that risk and that jump. And hopefully if this works the way I hope I can be that person for a few of you. So. I am excited. I have never been this excited about something for a long time, and I am ready to get to work. Essentially, yeah. And, and you're in it, as as uh as my big bro Lemmy would say, uh, you're in it now, and, and we're in it uh, because I already went to the future. And I already started putting a team together, and so you can call me Nick Fury uh, because uh, I'm assembling Avengers, and the Avengers don't even know they're being assembled yet. And so uh, this is like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Most people don't know I'm really a genius. But I just play a dumb basketball coach. So nobody asks me questions. Nobody expects anything from me. They just think I'm a dumb basketball coach. But really, if you look at my record in, in my uh, in my uh, graduate degrees, I haven't had a, a, a grade below 96% in any of my graduate programs. That's from a master's to a doctorate's. I've, I've did nothing but exemplary student. And so uh, I just play a dumb basketball coach because people think I am that. Like, you go and think that. Um, but just know I'm really a genius but most people can't comprehend what a genius level says anyway. And so you just speak in a language of people they can understand. And so, yeah, just keep thinking I'm a dumb basketball coach, but that's cool. 
uh, I don't sweat it. And that, that might hurt some people's feelings, but you know, I'm just calling out what I be seeing and what I be observing. That's why I don't say nothing. I just observe people. And so, uh, yeah, that's good for you. It's good for full circle so they can see it all the way through because uh, they're going to run this tape back 20 years from now. Um, you know, when Ford X Empire is taking over uh, the, the media content, because what's going to happen here is with AI and the way the world is changing, people are going to want authenticity. Uh, and that's what the, the the big social media platforms are pushing back on is the AI content uh, because people, they're fooling people with what's real and what's fake. And so this is as real as it gets. And so you're really seeing me, you're really hearing me talk from the future um, because I, I'm speaking from a place of where I'm going, not where I'm at. And most people can't speak from where they're going because they too stuck on the past. And that's why people always replay like Groundhog Day. I go to my job. I work to eight to five. I give them their glasses. I do it over and over and over and over and over and over. Now you're going to go to work tomorrow. You're going to change it to it. No, I'm serving to this person to the best of my ability because that habit forming is important. I'm going to serve this person. I'm going to give them the best experience they can have because when we do the Ford X experience, every person has got to have the best experience that they can have. And so, yeah, when you, when you flip that and you'll flip that mentality now, because now it's not, I'm, I'm at a dead end. Now this is, my propelling point to work on my habits, which is how's your day going? Uh, do, are you having a good day? Do those glasses fit? And, and it becomes more important because now, you know, you're building a, a potential fan base or a supporter for your future endeavors. And so now you'll change how you view everything to like, Oh, this person is going to support my future venture. You never know that little girl that come in there and see you and be like, Oh my gosh, I want to be her. And be like, yeah. And she'd be like, Oh my gosh, that's that girl that gave me my glasses. Oh my gosh. She's on this show. Oh my gosh, mom, I just love her. I want to buy her merch. <laughs> Most people ain't thinking like that. I just gave you a whole million dollar blueprint. Nobody's thinking about that. Nobody you know is thinking like this. I'm thinking like this. People I talk to think like this. And so because I think like this, people think I'm crazy because, oh, how are you going to do that? Why are you worried about how I'm going to do it? Just no, I'm going to do it. And just watch and sit back. I wrote a book. I got the hat on. My company name, everything, it's all come to fruition. Uh, we on iPhones, y'all talking on a cell phone, that came out of somebody's brains and thoughts. You ain't got no problem pushing that iPhone. You ain't got no problem getting on Facebook. You ain't got no problem getting on Twitter. You ain't got no problem getting on Instagram. You ain't got no problem getting on somebody else's stuff. But the minute somebody you know does it, you don't believe it's real. That's crazy. And I'm, I'm right here in front of you. And so um, that's why I'm all about action. That's why my book is about action. I don't, do, I don't like a lot of talking. Um, but yeah, that was a good question. And now we've reached number 20. Last, it's not even really a question. It's more another full circle moment. I want to hear from both sides, me and you. So last thing I got on here is kind of just believe in because at the end of the day, you could have all the resources and knowledge in the world. But if you don't believe in yourself and your vision, what's really going to come of it. So you yeah, I feel me personally, I feel like you got to visualize yourself winning because your mind is such a valuable resource and it's powerful. And I try to train myself to expect the outcome that I want to receive. And for me, that's a vital step in how I'm going to win. So I kind of want to know your thought process on it. And then, well, actually, yeah, I'm just going to give you mine first since I'm already here and talking. Mine, I believe in myself because other believe others believe in me. Like I got Justin and a shout out, Lemmy. I know you're watching this. Thank mm. me every day, every other day, whatever, telling me who I can be. Not that I need the reassurance because now here we are, six years down the line. He has beat it into my brain that I have something to offer to the world. That what I do and what I have to say matters. He gave me this podcast as a platform to talk to you all, to say what I want to say, and without people like that, again, going back to your inner circle, it's going to build you up so much and it's going to give you that confidence and that desire to really push and make your vision come true. So now I want to talk about you and what believe, what you think believing in yourself plays a part in this. How big of a role does it play? So, yeah, I'm going to just let you touch on that. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm going to be brief because we hit the hour mark. Um, <laughs> we could do this but, all day. Uh yeah, so this is how most of my conversations go with high-level people. 
Um, but to answer your question, most people are going to feel your confidence as, as a slight to them. Uh, and they're going to call it arrogance. They're going to call it cocky. They're going to call it all those things uh, because when they look at you, it's a reflection of their life. And when they look at me, it's a reflection of their life. And I'm a reflection of theirs. And because I'm pursuing a thing and I'm willing to say, I'm going to die on this hill. I'm going to die on my dreams. I'm going to get rich or die trying 50 cents though. Uh, because I'm willing to do that. They, they can't muster to look at me. They hoping I'm failed. They hoping I quit. They hoping I stop talking. They hope I shut up and go back and, and just be this good little coach that that's going to do it. That, 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 that's not afraid to step on this platform and stage. Um, but the world has changed. And, and and so the era we live in is in the world of content creation and service to others. And if you're not willing to serve others and get on this platform and speak, I don't have to get on here and talk. I could be at home playing Call of Duty. I could be posting, doing my own thing. I could be reading books. Uh, you could be doing that as well. But that would be just a very selfish act for a group of people that needs to hear this, a group of people that needs to see the blueprint. Uh, we ain't hiding nothing. I ain't hiding nothing. They can get it all for free. I'm giving all this away for free. I don't I ain't charging nobody a dime. I was asked by one of your contemporaries, one of your people that night, they're like, you need to charge this. I said, man, I ain't charging for nothing. I don't care like that. Uh, my hope is when they figure this out and they take this blueprint, they take this game plan, uh, that they'll come back and they buy a $35 t-shirt from me. That's all I'm asking for. Just come buy a t-shirt, come buy a phone case, come buy a hat. And if you, if, if the value wasn't there, then it's cool. I get it. Um, but that's all I'm asking for is a million people to come buy a hat. And that's it. A million people come buy a T-shirt. And you can get this game for free. I don't want nothing from y'all. Um, if you rock with me, cool. Buy a hat. Dream, Mr. Dreams to reality. If you don't rock with me, cool. I get it. Um, and that mentality allows you to operate in a space that most people can't comprehend and think about uh, because they worry about what others think. I don't expect anybody to buy my stuff. I don't expect anybody to listen to this podcast. I don't expect anybody to do nothing. Uh, people know what they want to do with their life. Um, and so because I get around people like my big bro, Lemmy, my mentor, I read books, I talk to myself, I write notes, I do all these things. Uh, it, it tells you that there's a whole group of people rooting for you. You just don't know. They just don't know about you yet. They don't know that you're out in existence because uh, I'm going to post this on my Instagram once I get it made. And uh, I got some graphics I need you to touch up. Uh, but uh, I think I sent it to you. It's the, the kid that was blasting out of his hometown and he's looking at two planets, right? So most people are afraid to blast out of their environment uh, because uh, there they're, takes so much energy to, to propel. But once you propel, you look at the beauty of the picture because you're not stuck in the picture. You're not walking around in the picture. And so uh, when you get around people that I know, uh, you know, it's possible. Uh, you have to go through the journey. You have to go through the trials and errors and all that stuff that you asked me earlier. Uh, because without those things, you you won't have no success. Uh, without those things, you can't get enough energy to propel you to the next level. Um, the, the infrastructure that I built is at least a thousand, two, three thousand dollars. But how am I going to ask uh, God to bless me? And I'm not willing to put work. It says work. It says faith without works is dead. And so that means you got to invest and put some money into it. And so, uh, yeah, you the voice and I'm the mentor. And so uh, I used to get a lot of these conversations from my grandma. My grandma used to sit down and talk to me like this. I always wondered why she would talk to me like this and why she would have conversations. Uh, but now I get it because uh, she gave me the context of life and, and how to treat other people and how to love other people and how to serve them. And so uh, if you never get this, if you never hear it, and if, if my grandkids, my children's children, one day they're going to listen to this and they're going to play it back and they're going to say, granddad was on to something. And so, uh, yeah, that's just us all. So we'll leave it at that because this could be a part two. But uh, no, I'm just improving. I'm just practicing right now. For all y'all that's wondering what I'm doing, I'm practicing my speech. If you go look at all my earlier videos, uh, my speech wasn't right. And so I'm working on this until I can't get it wrong. You rookies do it until you get it right. I'm doing it until I can't get it wrong. Uh, so that's why uh, my, my demeanor has changed. That's why my focus has shifted. Uh, but when you get to this level, it's a whole different, it's different up here. The air is different right now. You're, you got that young energy, which is good. Uh, but once your energy shifts and focus to, uh, really focused and refined, you'll be like, oh, okay, I get it. But right now you utilize that energy because, uh, once you get older, you'll be more refined and saying, okay, I get what he's saying at 33. 
uh, it's different at 33 than it is at 23 because you're about to be 23 this year. Um, and so, uh, yeah, happy early birthday in case I forget. But, yeah, 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 yeah. But, no, that's good for all you people at home. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, what parting words you got for them? I just, as always, want to thank you guys for joining us. And if anything we say here helps you at all in any way, then I know I've done my job right. And I hope you'll keep tuning in, keep hearing what I have to say. And I'll always be here to keep sharing my experiences with you. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I can clock out now. Uh, so, hey, great job, great job, great job. Uh, that's the wrap. That's the show. Uh, Mr. Dreams to Reality, the number one podcast host in the world, Pay James. Uh, it's Mr. Dreams to Reality, Coach Ford. Uh, but I'm for real. Uh, I'm all about giving out resources. Uh, th- this is a this is a bar. This entire episode was a bar. Uh, you can't even go pay college classes for this. You got to go attend the entire year of college to get this information. And so I know that for a fact because I'm getting my doctors. I could teach this as a course. Um, and so, uh, yeah, but check out the show. This was episode two to ask coach Ford. Uh, it, it was dope. Uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, I can, I can sign out and y'all probably wonder like, Oh, he switched up. No, uh, I'm clocking out. Right. So whenever we're in the show, I, I'm presenting you value, but when I'm clocking out, uh, I get to chill. I, I got to, I don't have to be on as much, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But great stuff. I'm, I'm ending the call. So episode three next week, it may not go as long. Hopefully it doesn't go as long. We'll find out. So, all right. Take. See ya. All right, bye.